So I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with these muscles along the side of the neck here. And we're gonna focus actually a little bit on the face and the jaw, which is something that I don't focus on too much, but there are muscles in those places as well. And they're actually muscles all over the top of your head as well. Uh, ladies, you know, when your ponytail is really tight all day and you feel that tightness up here in the top of your head, right? That's, that's one of those muscles we're gonna work on today, just a little bit. So I just wanna go ahead and start by turning my head left and right. And I'm gonna try to hold my core here, just get a nice passive core strengthening here and we're going to try not to tilt the head so we're going to try really hard not to look down not to look up and not to turn the head so we're just turning the head on axis which is one of the uh, c2 the second vertebra right and if you need to get a little extra stretch you can use your hand to just gently pull your chin and we're just going to do this a few times and you'll definitely notice that most of us have some trouble trying to tilt that head. If you need even more stretch, you can put your hands behind your back, just relaxed, right? Taking deep breaths, turning side to side, relax those shoulders, keep it breathing. So you can definitely feel this in the sternocleidal mastoid, this muscle right here. And that is responsible for pretty much every neck movement or is involved in every neck movement that you do. One more time each side. Of course, this is really nice on the ground too because you can kind of just sink into the ground and let gravity do the work. So let's go ahead and let's come back to front now. And now this time, instead of turning the head, we're going to tilt it without turning, right? So it's kind of like you're putting eardrops in, right? And try to get those eardrops. So tilt that head, really feel the stretch on the side of the neck here. Still holding that core and breathing. It's really tough to do, actually. Try to relax that shoulder. You can get an extra stretch by pushing that hand away from the body and you'll feel that all the way up the arm. So just breathe and hold. and slowly release, still holding that core. Ooh, if you've had a rotator cuff injury, this one is really, really tough, especially if you have your hand away from you and you can just leave your hand relaxed. As soon as you flex it, your shoulder's gonna feel that, right? So be careful with this one, go nice and slow and breathe. Relax. Let's go ahead and just do each side one more time. Oh, crunch. Uh, for those of you that were in a class already today, this is just going to be a nice stretch out. Nice cool down. Or it's a nice warm up for your walk because it's a beautiful day. We're going to go ahead now. We're going to do circles with the head. Now, I am going to go to the back. However, I really want you to make sure that we're not doing the turkey and the rain thing. So what I'm gonna have you do is either put your hand on the back of your neck so that your head can't go back that far, or you're just gonna have to make sure that it doesn't, okay? So you're gonna have to use those muscles in the front, just really, really reaching mobility of the head, right? One way that you can help uh, by not doing the, the turkey in the rain is at any given point, if I'm to the back, my head is also tilted. That way I can use the muscles on the side of my neck to support it because there's really no good muscle that brings your head forward again. It's a lot of pressure on the cervical spine. Okay, so we're just gonna do nice big circles. Of course, if you're laying on the ground, you can put a yoga mat underneath your neck and kind of look up back and towards like behind you and that feels pretty nice like on the front of the neck talk to someone who had a thyroid surgery and the muscles in the front of her neck got very very tight and these stretches are very helpful for her so it's just one of those things go ahead and let's just do a modified cat cow now just to loosen up the top of the traps at the base of the neck here Ooh. And breathing. I 
way I'm using my arms to kind of help guide me here because it helps me create a little extra tension for the stretch and loosen up the chest, of course, and these muscles here in the ribs. One more. Yes. Let's do a couple shoulder rolls. So just gentle, they're not huge, just gentle. Make sure you go in both directions. And I've been doing this one recently. I, I really like it for my shoulder. So I'm being a little selfish. You're gonna have to do it too. Is stir the soup, okay? And really you're just kind of feeling the looseness of the shoulder. If you're on the ground, if you're laying on the ground, what I recommend is just kind of feeling like you're doing backstroke, right? You can just bring your shoulder up and then around to the side and then back to the front, but loosen up that shoulder joint. Otherwise we're just kind of sitting cowboy style on the edge of the seat and letting the momentum do most of the work here. And this is really just allowing that blood flow through the hand and getting that synovial fluid going in the shoulder joint. And that's important, especially as we get older, if you have arthritis or a rotator cuff injury, the synovial fluid or lack thereof is very, uh, very important. Change direction. This is something you can do uh, when you're sitting for long periods of time. Next time you're on an airplane, let people stare, whatever. Stir the soup, shamelessly stir that soup. Other side, just make sure we're going in both directions here, letting it be nice and loose. If your shoulder's clicking or popping or if it hurts, just do smaller circles, right? You don't need much. Go ahead and change direction. Take a nice deep breath, feeling a nice little gentle stretch in the inner thigh as well. <clears throat> Good. All right, so we're gonna stretch the levator scapulae. And it's one of those muscles named for its function. It lifts the scapulae, it levitates the scapulae, the shoulder blades. And a lot of people have really tight muscles right here because of either forward neck posture or kyphosis, okay? So it's this muscle that you're always begging to, oh, get up in there, right, at the base of your neck, okay? So what we're gonna do is stretch that out. So go ahead and let's take the left hand, you're just gonna put it behind your back. And it doesn't have to be high up, right? It doesn't have to be here. It could just be relaxed behind you at your mid back. And we're gonna put the right hand on the back of our head. We're gonna turn the head like we're gonna smell the armpit. You can go ahead and do that if you like, because you're gonna have to breathe, right? Hope you put on deodorant. Anyway, so I'm just gonna use my hand to just gently like pull my head towards my armpit. Now try to relax everything else. You're gonna feel this right through here, okay? That's an advantage to Zoom classes. Nobody can smell me. Keep your core nice and activated and drop that left shoulder, right? Let the shoulders relax. Deep breaths. If you have to, you can put your hand on the chair behind you or on the ground behind you. Eventually you're gonna feel that left shoulder just relax. Gotta let it relax. Coming out of this one's a little bit tricky. First thing I do is just release my hand off my head, bring my left hand forward again, and I'm just gonna roll my head oh, forward to the other side. And then I'm just gonna release that shoulder a little bit. That's a really tricky stretch, really tough, tense muscles. Okay, other side, right hand behind the back. I'm gonna take my left hand and just gently bring my hand, bring my head towards my armpit, relaxing that right shoulder. Still keeping that core nice and active, deep breaths. Deep, deep breaths. One thing that I, tend to do when my stretches are really tight or they hurt. I don't know if anyone else does this. 
got to clench my jaw. If the knees can't lock, if the shoulders can't drop, the jaw is going to clench. Try to, you can open and close your jaw uh, a couple times, move it a little bit side to side, and that'll actually help you loosen up in the shoulder. You'd be surprised. You would probably feel that right through here. Nice deep breath. And go ahead and release very slowly. And let's just go ahead and do a couple modified cat cows. If you're laying on the floor on your back, just go ahead and just breathe, stretch. I'm gonna do a couple rolls of the head. These are really useful stretches if you've got a headache or if you slept wrong on your pillow or something. Do some rolls to the back, big rolls this time. I'm gonna put my hands here, make it easier. Other direction. Show off your guns. I have none, I have no guns. Zero. And let's reach up overhead. And my hands are clasped just right up above my head next to my ears and I'm gonna go up and over. Oh, breathing. And let's come back to center and to the other side. Deep breaths. I am leaned slightly forward as I do this. Okay, you don't want to arch your back, so lean slightly forward so we get a nice stretch out of the side body. You should feel that right through here. And if it hurts your lower back, I wouldn't recommend it. And let's go ahead and relax. Couple more cat cows. Really get those shoulders moving. Really flow. Oh, drop that head. Really get your hips involved. Good. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stretch. <clears throat> I'm going to put my knee up because it's just bugging me a little bit. I would recommend just staying. Stay in square, but go ahead and we're gonna cross. Let's start with the right arm over the body. So keep the shoulder down. Don't let it hunch up because when you bring it across, it's gonna wanna come towards the ear. So keep it right over the middle. Yes, yeah, see my shoulder did it. Okay, right over the middle of your body the best you can and let, let the weight of that arm be held by the other arm, okay? And you really don't need much to feel this in the shoulder, very stiff today. And just bring that across, see how the shoulder came up. Make sure we're trying to stay down best we can. Try to relax both shoulders. If you need more stretch, you can kind of do this hug thing. And then like, imagine that you're trying to uh, like split through your shirt. <laughs> you're trying to flex really hard and just try to let those shoulder blades open up. Again, what is that Tommy boy? Classic. And you can drop your head. Ooh, yes. Try to stay up through the spine, though, as you drop your head. Hold in your core. And release nice and slow, other side. If you are doing the hug thing, just make sure that you switch which arm is on top. So this way. And you may feel it in one shoulder and nothing in the other. That's okay, do both sides anyway. Oh, stay lifted through the core. Of course, you can roll your head while you do this too. I want everybody leaving with nice loose necks. and go ahead and release nice and slow. I'll put my hands on my hips. I'm gonna puff out my chest as I bring my elbows to the back, squeezing those shoulder blades, and I'm gonna try to bring them forward without moving my hands. You're not gonna get very far, but you can feel a nice gentle stretch in the shoulder. And just do that a couple times. I swear, sometimes 
if one body part doesn't hurt, it's somewhere else. Foot was feeling fine, and then all of a sudden my knee's like, hello, just want you to know you're almost 30. Everyone's scoffing at me now, I know. Go ahead and loosen up those hands. Let's actually loosen up the elbows a little bit and the forearms. I want you to stir the soup again, but just with the wrists. So try not to let your forearms rotate. So you can tell by putting your arms out in front of you, just soft elbows, right? And you're just going to conduct an orchestra, right? Don't let the forearms rotate. You'll be able to tell because your elbow will still be facing the ceiling. Stay nice and tall and loosening them up. If you spend a lot of time at a computer or writing or sewing, cross stitch, I don't know, you might have some tightness in your forearm. So let's go ahead. We're going to flex the left hand. Stop. And then we're going to take that right hand and just flex it gently, gently back. And if you have to, you can let that elbow bend, but try to imagine that you're kind of like pushing the palm forward and you'll feel a stretch through the forearm here. You can also do this if you have to. You can do it upside down like this so that you're not rotating at the uh, radius. And then I like to do the opposite direction. So I'm just gonna show you my non-existent engagement ring. There's nothing, okay? And just flex the hand. Try not to lock the elbow. As soon as I get that ring, I'll be showing everybody, you believe me. Sometimes there's a lot of muscles in here. So if you need to rotate the arm to kind of get the right one, yeah, there it is. Go ahead and do that. Just kind of explore, know where your muscles are tight because it's a chain. Sometimes a muscle that's tight in the forearm is gonna trickle somewhere to the shoulder, to the neck, especially if you're active. Loosen that up. Other side, Oop, this way. Nice deep breaths. As I hold my breath, and then do the opposite direction. Try not to lock that elbow. That spot feels super duper good. Good, and go ahead and shake them out and relax. Grab a drink of water, take a break for just a moment. I will be right back. I need to grab my water. So make sure that you are staying hydrated. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stand up now and use my chair, okay? I'm just gonna start with my hands right on the chair, take a nice step back. And I wanna be bent in half, but not all the way. So do make sure that you are bending your knees, right? Don't ever let your knees hyperextend or lock backwards, okay? And my feet are just about at hip width here, okay? And I'm not, I'm intentionally not going really far back. We'll get there, okay? Well, what I want to do is just a modified cat cow. I'm, I'm, I'm finding that a lot of us are really not quite getting that full uh, benefit of the, the cat cow. So if we're standing upright like this, and especially if you can see what your spine is doing, it really helps. So if you get a nice straight back position, right, core is engaged, it's all in the hips. So as soon as I move those hips forward, my ribs are going to follow, my head's going to drop, and then I'm going to go the opposite direction. Stick out your booty. So my pelvis is what's doing the work here. Okay, again, try not to lock those knees and we're really feeling constant flow. We're trying really hard not to push through maximum range of motion. We are trying to flow, right? And you should probably know where your maximum range of motion is. If you don't, your body will tell you and just listen to your body. Few more times. You can also start kind of rotating a little bit. 
No, it's silly. Those of you taking the belly dancing class, right? So you can kind of start to rotate. But again, this is all in the pelvis. I'm really using these low abdominal muscles in my back to move the pelvis. So when you're doing this, you can also kind of <laughs> rotate, okay? Another advantage to zoom for all of you. you I don't have to see you, right? But just really keep moving through and you'll start to feel that in the upper back and the hamstrings one more either direction good let's go ahead and start loosening up the hips i'm going to do the twist okay i'm just going to use my chair just to balance i don't know about my knee doing this today oh it's fine okay so my toe is still on the ground right the whole ball of my foot still on the ground and I'm just loosening up the hip. I'm not pushing down through the foot. I'm actually being pretty light and I'm just trying to loosen up the hip. Okay. You can do the full on twist if you really want to. And you're just loosening up. Like can't help, but. Okay. So if you have to do it slow, go for it. We're trying to open up that hip, trying to open, like show this flat surface on the inner thigh here. Okay. And then we're going to close almost as much as we can, right? And you'll feel that through here. So just do that nice and gentle. Holding the core, of course, and switch sides. And taking nice deep breaths. Of course, you can do this slow. If you need more leverage, to stretch, you can use something really solid. Just try to stay really square, right? Or try, like if you wanna work on your tree pose, opening that leg out to the side, your hips gotta stay square. But if you have trouble holding this leg, you can try to use some leverage, but remember, it's in the glutes. Come back at noon for glutes. Good, and go ahead and relax. Let's just do some really slow high marches, and if you want, you can Stretch that out. Oh, knee is not having that today. Go ahead and stretch out your quads best that you want. Okay, you can do what I'm doing here or you can be on your chair. I'll show that in just a second. Just make sure you're breathing, loosening up those quads. So if you're in your chair, just leave your foot hanging off the side and you're just gonna hinge those hips backwards and sit right on your shin. Leave your foot relaxed and you'll feel the stretch in the top of the thigh. Make sure you do both sides. You can also be of course on the ground in a child pose. Just hold this, hold the core. And release nice and slow. Let's go ahead and do a nice wide squat here. I'm just gonna hold that stretch. I'm gonna use my chair. So I am doing a nice wide squat, starting to feel the stretch in my hamstrings and my lower back, keeping that core active. Just make sure you're breathing, try to relax the muscles on the bottom of your foot. So unclench your toes, don't lock your knees. And when you're ready, if you want to, you can go ahead and like lean back and do a modified down dog here. Really feeling that stretch in the uh, serratus anterior, these muscles right through here. Deep breaths. If you can, put down your head. And you should feel that stretch a lot more through the spine when you do that. And come out nice and slow, very, very slow. Make sure that you go slow. Come on out. 
Okay. I'm going to stretch the calves, and then I think we're going to come back to the hips. So I'm actually going to use my foam pad to help me with this one. You can use a rolled up towel, yoga mat, anything will work. But I'm going to... Uh, okay, so my left foot is going to start behind me, and I'm going to step over my foam pad. If you don't have one, don't worry. Just, just do the same thing without... The reason I do this is because my Achilles and my calves are very, very tight, and I don't it kind of hurts me to do these stretches, so the foam really helps take that away. So if you find something like that that works for you, do it every time. Okay, I'm trying really hard not to lock my knee, but I'm pretending that my back heel is very heavy, right? It's dropping towards the floor, just gently bending this knee, holding the core, and already feeling a stretch. If you want to multitask, you can flex your front foot on the wall or your chair or whatever you've got in front of you. I don't need to multitask. This one is intense. So we're just breathing. And go ahead and bend that back knee just a little bit. Keep that heel heavy and you're going to feel that stretch change from the bulk of the calf, the belly of the calf, down into more of the heel, into the direct Achilles tendon. Again, if this hurts, don't go so far. You can do a smaller stride, right? Also, I feel your pain. Keep breathing. Go ahead and straighten that leg back out just a little bit. No locked knees. And I'm gonna lean forward, gently lifting that heel. Very, very slow. And relax. Go ahead and just do some circles, gentle circles with that ankle. Get that blood flow back in there. And we will do the other side. So again, let that back heel be heavy. Both knees are slightly bent holding the core, just breathing. If you're doing a lot of social distancing, walking, it's very important that you stretch these muscles. Especially if you have a knee injury, actually, it's important to keep the calves strong and flexible because they're major supporters of the knee. I'm just breathing, just trying to relax. Let that heel drop down. And I'm not rotating my foot outwards, by the way. I'm really not trying to open up my heel or my hip. I'm trying to stay parallel in my feet. Take a nice deep breath. Go ahead and bend that back knee just a little bit, both knees actually, and you'll feel the stretch change. Try to relax those toes. Just breathing. Come out of this one very, very slowly. Step it forward on your front foot, roll through that foot, Ugh. and do some gentle circles with that foot. Let's go ahead and do another down dog before we get to hips. I'm gonna use my uh, foam pad here. <clears throat> if you're very flexible, I really recommend that you start progressing a little bit more instead of just doing your, your stretches without any equipment. So the yoga mat or the foam pad will really help you get more flexible. So I, I challenge you to not push your boundaries, <laughs> stretch your boundaries, I guess. Okay. Don't hurt yourself, obviously. So I like to hang my heels off the back to get a little extra stretch out of my hamstrings. And you can do that with a yoga mat underneath your toes. I'm just doing a nice 
Nice quick down dog here. Just rocking gently back and forth, relaxing. Of course, you don't have to have straight arms. Always modify for your body if you need. And I'm going to do a couple bends and straightens, but not straightening all the way. Deep breaths. And come on out nice and slow. That one always feels so good. All right. Go ahead and sit in my chair. Now I'm going to drink some water first. Okay. Sitting in the chair. <sighs> I want to be on the very edge. Oh, that down dog feels so good. I'm gonna start with my less flexible hip. I usually always bring my right leg on top of my left. I'm gonna do the opposite. Okay, so how's my knee doing today? Okay. If you need more stretch, number one, you can do this on the ground. You can do a pigeon if you know how to do that. Otherwise, I like to put my, I got my foam, and I'm just gonna put my feet right on top of that. And what that does is it elevates my bottom leg, so it makes it more of a stretch for my top leg. Totally optional. So we're just gonna sit up nice and straight, just leg crossed over the other. <laughs> and this is probably enough for most of us. Lean slightly forward, engaged in the core, trying to relax. If you have trouble, if this is already too much for you, you can use your upper body to kind of bring this, let this leg be dead weight, and you can just kind of pull your leg like towards the opposite side and you'll feel a gentle stretch here. If you're still not able to do that, you need to start doing some clam shells. Start doing those physical therapy exercises. Strengthen up those butt muscles and loosen up the hips. I think I'll do some clam shells in class later today. Come back for clams at noon. So just trying to relax the foot. And you'll notice if, if you're stiff, you lean a little bit, which I'm stiff. Okay, so I try to stay nice and upright, holding the core nice and tall. This webcam does not do me any favors. <sighs> Loosen up the hamstrings. And if you need more stretch, of course, you'll go up and forward. <sighs> Relax your butt. Relax those shoulders, and you're just leaning on that knee. Don't ever push on it, don't ever yank on it. can lean on it gently, but don't push. And while we're here, I'm just gonna loosen up my fingers a little bit. Just kind of rolling through my fingers, distracting me from the hip, very tight hip. And don't forget about those hands. There's muscles and joints and nerves and bones in the hands and the feet too. Get them nice and loose. Pretend that you're playing Chopin. Yeah. I'm just gonna <laughs> and go ahead and come out nice and slow. Uh, lean it back. <sighs> this time I'm gonna bring my knee up if you can towards the chest, and I'm just relaxing my back. My back is just curved. I'm not worrying too much about it is relaxed and if you need more it'll just sit up nice and straight or you can put your foot behind your head if you really want if you're into that those of you with IT band syndrome I bet you're feeling this right now right through here release that leg nice and slow I'm gonna do one more forward fold over the leg drop your head if you need to Deep breaths. And come on out. Nice and slow. Go ahead and stick your leg out in front with your foot flexed. 
and you'll do a quick hamstring stretch. I'm going to do it like this. It's also, if you can do this, it's a good stretch for your shoulder too. Just take it slow. Otherwise, we're just leaning forward with our foot on the ground. And bend that knee nice and slow, and we're going to do the other side. So right leg over top of the left, and we're just sitting up slightly lean forward. Just breathing. I always find that stretching my hips is very relaxing. I guess I clench my butt a lot. I don't know, but I hold a lot of tension in my hips and my shoulders. So I always try to take these moments when I'm feeling relaxed to look forward to things. Especially right now when we're all having a tough time. Just look forward to something you're going to do today. And if you don't have anything, create something to look forward to. I think I'm going to do a jigsaw puzzle. Absolutely. Thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. Go ahead now. Lean it slightly back and we're going to bring that, hug that knee up to the shoulder, the opposite shoulder here. If this hurts your knees, um, number one, try to relax the hamstrings as you do this. And also you don't have to go as far as I do, right? Just because I'm doing, I have my hips at a certain angle. You don't have to do this. I see some people, um, they use some kind of prop to like, let their legs sit on if they can't get it open like this. Because a lot of time, if you try to let this open, it's gonna tense up and it's gonna make your stretch harder. So do what you have to do to relax in your stretches. That's important. Just breathing, hugging that hip. And we're gonna let that leg drop back down and we're gonna think up and over. Oh yes, relax the feet. Drop the head if you can. <sighs> Take a nice deep breath. <sighs> and come on up nice and slow. Go ahead and stick your leg out in front of you, foot flexed on the ground. Do a hamstring stretch or you can lift your leg up. By the way, my knee is still bent. I never try to do this with a straight leg. It's a lot of pressure on the ACL. By the way, you don't have to do it as far as I do either. Although if you straighten the leg most of the way, you will feel it here. Please don't hurt yourself. I mostly do it for the shoulder. And go ahead and bring that leg back in. Let's do a nice cowboy stance here. If you are on the ground laying on your back, do a happy baby, okay? Just like lay back and let your knees flap open to the side. You're gonna hold your heels, or you can just do a butterfly, but we're gonna try to open those groin muscles and some of the hip flexors in here. So otherwise, we're just sitting like a cowboy. I need my hat and my boots. I don't have a hat or boots. If you don't feel anything sitting in the chair, stand up and let your body weight kind of drop down between the hips and you'll feel that stretch in the thighs. You can also gently open those thighs out to the side. Just try to relax your butt. And breathe. And relax your shoulders. And while you're here, you can go ahead and do a small, if you want, rotation for the spine. Oh, if you find a spot that feels good, hang out there. And 
just do what stretches feel good for you. And go ahead and relax. I'm actually going to straighten my legs out, get a stretch out of, uh, it's one of those hip flexors there. But take a moment to kind of just do your own loosening up, stretching out, drink a water. Oh. And before I finish up, I'm just going to leave a minute open for any requests, any muscle groups that I haven't touched on or you have questions on. The DJ is accepting requests. No Justin Timberlake, though, please. Motown and classics only. All right, looks like we don't have any requests, so you get to continue to take my abuses. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna stretch the chest. We're gonna work on some breathing. Core, she says stretch the core, haha, <laughs> good timing. Okay, you know what, actually we can incorporate, incorporate this into the chest as well. I'm gonna turn this way. By core, I'm assuming you mean the front, because most people usually mean the front, but let's remember that it's also, it's a three-dimensional cube. So while we stretch the core, we're gonna also focus on breathing. So let's either put our hands on the tops of the shoulders or right at the base of our skull here, okay? We don't wanna hold the head, but let's just cross those fingers and bring those arms up here. And before we even start, we're just gonna breathe. Open those elbows out to the side. And deep breaths. Let those shoulders drop down. Big belly breaths, really when you breathe in, puff out your belly, okay? Deep, deep belly breaths. You get to hear me breathe. I wanna hear you all breathe and I wanna know you're all breathing in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Okay, so while we do this, especially if you're doing deep belly breaths, I'll let you see my belly. While we're doing this, you really wanna puff it out, okay? Show me, show me your cookies. And then really push back in, okay? All right. And as you get going, you're really gonna start to feel yourself kind of lean back and expand through the front of the body, really stretching that rectus abdominis, that six pack muscle that we all have, okay? And if you want to, you can kind of like lean back. Be careful with that one. You can also lean back in your chair and kind of arch your back over the back of the chair, stretching the core. So go ahead and keep doing that. If you have a ball, great for stretching the core. Awesome. So go ahead and keep doing that. I'm trying to think of the best way. There is no best way. So. We're just gonna, I start sitting on the ball, I roll it forward and let my head hang off the back. So like my shoulder blades are at the North Pole, very top of the sphere. And then from there, I just kind of roll back and lay heavy on the ball. And the curvature of the ball stretches my spine and then stretches the core. And then of course, you can get even more of a stretch if you uh, open those arms out to the side, just let gravity do the work and relax. If you find that the blood's rushing to your head, just support it with your hands. You're still gonna get a good stretch out of the chest and the belly. And when you're done, just roll yourself out nice and slow. Also important that when we stretch the core, we stretch these muscles a little bit on the side. So we'll do that too. I'm gonna continue to do that on my ball. You can use your chair if you want to. But I'm just going to put my right hand on the back of my head and I'm gonna imagine that I'm making a big arc with my elbow towards the ceiling, straight towards the ceiling. And I'm just trying to stay tall and you'll feel this gentle stretch here. You can also right, roll front and back. and stretching that. So try to get your upper arm vertical.
and whew, come on out nice and slow. You must have been taking Ron or Kirk's classes, of course, or I know they're meaner than I am. So same thing, uh, left arm in the back of the head, you're gonna big arc. Try not to move the rib cage. You're really just trying to stretch the side body. And breathe. And go ahead and come on out nice and slow. Let's go ahead and do one more stretch for the front of the body. It's feeling pretty good, helping me open up. Okay, so take your own stretch, do your favorite thing in your chair, either your cat cow, really connects the breathing. Really, really ensure that when you're opening the chest, you're breathing into the lungs. They come down to like right here. So open and breathe, right? And then create that pressure and breathe out, right? So every time you do your cat cow, really make sure you're breathing. Do whatever stretch you want to do. It's free for all. Take a deep, deep breath. If you have a ball, I like to kind of like move around a little bit, and this really helps me pinpoint <laughs> where I'm tight. It feels nice on my hips too. If you don't have one of these, I really recommend getting one. Oh, deep breaths. Come on out nice and slow. And relax. Let's go ahead and find our way up to standing. We're going to finish up with just a little bit of feet stuff. You know me, I got to do feet stuff. I recommend you this on your yoga mat or something squishy, okay? Like my foam pad. This is my favorite piece of fitness equipment, by the way. I don't care what uh, state of fitness that you're in. This thing is incredible. It's so versatile. Um, it's multi-purpose. It's great. And my computer battery is running low. Hang on just one second. So go ahead, grab a drink of water. And let me plug my computer in. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. So again, I'm just going to use my chair. You can also use a wall. Okay. And I will show you my llama socks. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start doing that thing that cats do on their scratch pad, right? And that scratch board, whatever it is. Okay, and you're just gonna kind of articulate the feet just a little bit. And this should feel really nice if you've got foot injuries, even knee injuries. Loosening up the ends of the kinetic chain is always really helpful. One thing that you can do too, if you've got a foam pad like this or a yoga mat is you can curl your toes over the edge. So like the arch of your foot is still on the thing. You try to touch your toes, oh yes, to the floor. That always feels really nice on your feet. And you can really move your feet around without really worrying that they're going to get hurt on the floor. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I am going to let my toes hang off the side and we're going to finish up with a nice modified down dog. Okay. And I'm going to do like this. Okay, so just nice straight back. I'm intentionally touching my toes to the floor to help me stretch the arch of my foot. Okay, I'm gonna drop my head as far as I can down, reaching and breathing. If you're shaking, just come on out just a little bit. Give your body a moment and breathe. Deep breaths. Try to go a little further in that stretch. Hold and breathe. Okay. 
And let's come out nice and slow. We're gonna come up through a bent back though. So let your head stay dropped and you're still folded, rolling up one vertebrae at a time. And come on up, good. We're gonna reach up overhead and back down, reach. And back down, one more. Reach, 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 reach. And back down. You know I did a good job with my shirts all messed up. All right, well done everybody, thank you.